Stampede, a stampede of 100,000 Mustangs, Ford Mustangs. In less than four months, the Ford Mustang has become the most talked about, most exciting, and fastest selling new car in over 20 years. What a beautiful day. I'm so expecting galloping horses to be flying by under the sun shining because we're in the original American pony car, the 1965 Ford Mustang. Now you know the story. Ford Division President Lee Iacocca decided that Ford really needed a car for a low-cost, mid-sized to compact vehicle that he could sell just as well to 21-year-old secretaries as he could to performance enthusiasts in their 40s. So he took the Falcon underpinnings and created this gorgeous, iconic body and through no less than 40 options and then a gaggle of dealer accessories. And the result was really one of the most popular cars in American history. They made 681,000 of these vehicles and they sold each and every one of them. And now that we're driving it today on, well, just a number of hours before 4th of July, we're in red, white, and blue, and I can understand why every single one of them sold, because this is awesome. So, they might have made a ton of coupes and convertibles and actually a fair number of uh, 2 plus 2 fastbacks. But the car we're in today is a really rare pony. So, there were only three tenths of 1% of 1965 production that were like this, which were code 76C bench seat convertibles. What that means is we've got really two bucket seats, but with a fold-down armrest in the middle, so we can turn what is essentially a five-person vehicle into a six-person vehicle. You know, what also makes this a relatively rarer version of the Mustang is that aside from the bench seat, which actually wasn't an option, it was model code, there are very few options on this car. In fact, you can pretty much count them on one hand. There's this push button AM radio instead of a radio without memory. You have spinner hubcaps on 14-inch wheels, 13 was standard. And you have a day-night mirror. It's about 70 bucks worth. So this car carried a sticker of just over 2,600 bucks. Otherwise, it is totally base. It's a six-cylinder, three-speed, manual brakes, manual steering, manual top. And even though it's low on content, it really stands up as a very fun, very comfortable, very rewarding car overall. Now, when the 65 Mustang debuted, the enthusiasts called them 64 and a half cars. You could get a 170 cubic inch 6, a 260 two barrel 8, or two versions of the 289. Several months later, the 65 mid year cars came out, and the 170 was replaced with a 200, a much stouter engine, and the 260 went away. 
One of the reasons was is that the 200 in line six was producing 190 foot pounds of torque, which was the same as the 260. It does produce 120 horsepower. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but you gotta remember, performance isn't what we remember it in the 50s and 60s. Those high performance cars really weren't as high performance and fast as we think they were. You know, they're kind of like that high school cheerleader who everybody thought was fast. You know, in retrospect, by modern standards, not so much. So, this car is capable of well over 100 miles an hour, and it cruises wonderfully 65, 70, 75 miles an hour. Running power to the rear wheels in this car is the Ford three-speed manual. As you can see, the throws aren't typical of the standard Ford four-speed boxes, where the throws from you know second to third, you basically have to set your watch ahead an hour because it's so long. On this one, it's actually just a box that works. Uh, you have to get used to the fact that it is an unsynchronized first gear, like a lot of sports cars from the 50s and 60s, so you can't put it into gear into first while you're still moving or you'll grind. Clutch pickup is somewhat idiosyncratic. It's high up on the pedal travel, so don't be alarmed if you're driving one of these and then hop into your daily driver manual transmission and immediately stall it. That's happened to me. But on the whole, it's actually really easy to shift. You know, there is a slightly interesting thing about having a bench seat convertible with a three-speed. Unless I was a practicing urologist or having my wife sitting next to me, I'm not sure I feel comfortable with someone there. I mean, look where the gear shift the hand are. I mean, that's into private parts territory. Now let's talk about handling. Even though there are just Falcon underpinnings, the size and weight distribution make for a pretty competent handling car. It's a solid rear axle, and in this car, we don't even have power steering. So it actually feels way more direct. It's very light, and you can even parallel park this. It's just well geared. You feel more connected to the road in this than you do in many of the other Impalas and Camaros and well, even Falcons and other Ford Cousins. I'd say that stops pretty well. So I know what everybody wants to know is what it'll do zero to 60. Well, I don't know, let's find out.
1965 Mustang convertible because it makes you feel good every time you drive it. I mean, you feel like Brandon Walsh in Beverly Hills 90210. It's an image car, it's an icon, but it's also fun to drive, it's rewarding to drive. 